I've ended up on a, um, a Canadian boat uh, called Passat. It's a Belize 43 Fountain Peugeot. And um, one conversation led on to another and someone found out that I did some rigging stuff. And uh, these guys were very politely asked if I could have a look at their rig. I said, yep, that's no worries. Uh, so I said, I'll uh, come and show them. Got the halyard banging there. Come and show them uh, what they need to look for uh, with their boat. So they were very uh, vigilant and they had all the wires changed when they're uh, up in the States and they've cruised down the um, cruised down the Caribbean and they're currently here in um, Antigua which has been enough sailing to actually bed everything in and stretch everything and now they need to do a little retune um, and like all cruises you know trying to save a few bucks but if they can understand the fundamentals of uh, how their rig works it will show you um, what they need to look for what turn buckles to turn to bring it back into shape and basically how to do it. We're looking up a mast here, and we've got a bit of a halyard banging and flopping. There's a reason for that, and I'll talk about that in a second. But, first of all, you want to be looking up the back end of your rig, because this says everything, okay? So we're looking up the, the track here, and if we look at the track on this particular one, we're going to actually see that they've been on one tack for a while, coming down the coast. Um, and the bottom panel where this lower spreader is we can actually see it's got a bit of a curve uh, uh, top of your screen out the starboard side so it, it bends this way a bit uh, between down here and where that second spreader is there's a bit of a curve in the mast so to get rid of that curve and straighten it back out again we actually need to get this spreader here to push the mast in that way to push the mast and that way to get rid of the curve that is that way okay nice and simple to get this spreader to push in this way we need to tighten this wire here okay um, so what we're going to do is we're going to come down we're going to um, take the split pins out and then um, tighten this um, wire up and then we'll have a look back up the mast and see if it's pushed it back in this way but what we also need to check is when we do that because our spreaders face aft when we tighten this wire up it's going to push more pre-bend into the mast and this is why this horrible rope was flapping around before because we're checking the pre-bend so let's go and have a quick look at the pre-bend okay so you'll see that that little black rope there flapping around in the breeze uh, when it wasn't so windy and bumpy that's actually fairly tight and straight and what we're doing is using that as a gauge as to how much bend we have in the mast uh, <laughs> can't make my hand do it how much bend we have in the mast this way okay we don't want to go too crazy uh, so as a rough rule of thumb we want 2% of the length, so from here to the masthead in um, oh, between 1% and 2% of, of pre-bend. Um, so on this thing, it looks smaller than ours, it might only be a 15 metre mast. Uh, so 1% will be 150 mil, 2%, uh, no 15 mil, 2% uh, will be 30 mil of pre-bend uh, at these spreaders or in between the spreaders in the middle um, is where we're going to want to see that maximum bend now you need to know that the the rope you can see is actually not pulled in tight against the mast have we stopped oh no 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 it's still going no 
right, still going. The screen on the back just turned off. Um, so we need to allow for the offset of the rope roughly at the bottom and at the top because it comes out of the sheave at the top. So there's an offset of the rope and it just gives it a, a, a ballpark to, to work with. Uh, you can actually look up the mast as well and um, see if you've got enough uh, pre-bend. So we do want to put a little bit more pre-bend in this mast because it's a bit straight in the bottom end and we want to straighten it. So just by tightening up that one diamond on that side, we should be good for go. Right, so I was a little bit too efficient and I pulled the uh, split pin, cotter pins, whatever country you come from, those little metal things that go through there that stop it rotating things, they're out. Um, you would have seen in a video where we're doing my rig, I like to put the, the nuts and bolts in here. It's just a lot neater and yeah, that was the whole story about that. And Anna will put a little square here showing the video to that. <laughs> so. We've got a little bit of lubrication on these threads as well. Uh, so the previous rigger, they were they were good in that they lubricated. It felt like a um, lanolin style uh, of grease, quite a thick, sticky grease. Uh, if you haven't got that, uh, Tef Gel is another good one. Uh, any grease, any oil, so some sort of lubrication on the threads. Because uh, when we turn this, there's going to be a little bit of welly on it. Um, now Steve's here, all prepared. He's got some spanners on the bottom thread and the actual wire itself you don't want to spin the wire while you're turning the turnbuckle because that's bad um, so anyway I'm going to tighten this up I'm going to take um, I'm going to go a whole two turns on this just because I can see that it's actually um, we got a little bit to goes and we're going that way Stick my eyeballs up the mast again and see what it looks like. see that the next one up needs a little bit um, so we'll have a quick little look again check a few things and um, see what goes on but it's as simple as that so um, yeah <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't get more simple than that you turn the turnbuckle it gets tight and it pushes it back the other way uh, what I might do is I might stick the camera up so we can do the comparison okay. before and after Let's have a look. Ah. So now that the sun is right there and it's really hard to see, we can actually see up the back edge of the rig and we can actually now see the bottom end is quite straight and where the second spreader is, there's a little bit of a curve like that. So my guess is we're going to need another half to one turn on that upper one because it's not as bent as this one is and that will have this rig straightened right out no worries at all all right here we go so the other one we've been looking at is the front beam and the martingale, Woo, this wire here. So this was a, it was tight uh, and it was tight enough. We gave it a couple of little turns, actually a full turn. 
So what we're looking for is to know how tight this bad boy is. Is if we have a look down here. Oops, if I can hold this in the right place. We're looking down the beam here. Because we have no uh, compression strut between the beam and the boat on this, uh, this boat, this beam will bend backwards because the, not only is the force tape pulling up, there's actually a component of pulling back. Um, now, we want a small pre-bend in the front beam where it bends downwards a little bit. Uh, this one, oh, if there is a little bit of downwards, it's a very, very small amount uh, and you may not see it on the camera. Uh, so we don't want a full-blown full banana. Um, but what you want to do is when you look down at here, you want it seeing it, uh, worst case scenario, dead flat. Best case scenario, maybe five millimeters, what's that, quarter of an inch, bending downwards. Um, and that's the maximum you want it bending down. And that way we know we've got pre-tension in the beam downwards and that the martingale is um, locking up this front end so that when the four stay pulls on it, everything's nice and tight and rigid and all the rest of it. So what we did, it was a little bit loose or we wanted to put a bit more tension in. We took these cotter pins here out and spun it around. It did take a little bit of effort. Uh, if yours is a bit tight, you may need to ease the side stays, which take, lets the rig tension off the four stay, which means that you can tighten this bad boy up. So if this is really tight and you can't actually turn it, you actually have to ease the side stays to tighten this one up. So. But anyway, so that's how you look at the, uh, the front beam and the martingale and making sure that this, the tune on this one is um, approximately correct. So there's the chair. I was hanging out in that. <laughs> Got Steve's beautiful yes. feet in the shot here. Foot <laughs> modeling. Um, so why is the chair out? Because I had to go and dangle from that spreader there to get to that turnbuckle there so that I could get the um, bend in the mast. It was bent a little bit to our starboard side. So to straighten it out, I needed to push the spreader on the starboard side up the top there, that way. And the way I pushed that spreader that way was tightening the wire that goes around it. Uh, so now if we look up the mast, we'll see it's looking pretty straight. Uh, uh. Glamorous job, this boat thing, eh? The holes in my pants and my ass hanging out of it, yeah. <laughs> so if we look up the mast now, we try and pick a nice straight edge. Okay, we can look at the track, but the track is um, indica indicative only. Because the track is actually bolted on, it's only as straight as the guy that bolted it on. Um, so we try to use that as a baseline indication because it's easy and big to look at. But then if we want to get really nitty gritty is we'll take a groove or a feature that's uh, extruded into the mast going up and we'll follow that up all the way to the top with our eyeball and then we sort of see if there's any bends or wiggles or jiggles and all the rest of it. Um, and we can actually see that we've actually had a quite a a nice win here and the, the rig is actually looking quite nice and straight. We have a reasonable amount of pre-bend. Um, so these guys are ready to go sailing again and um, try and settle and stretch the, the wires in a bit more. Um, so I'd say they've probably got another 200 miles uh, of sailing and they'll have to have a look at this again and maybe give it a little tweak. But yeah, that's uh, what we look at when we're retuning the mast after the initial tune or if the rigger you got uh, unfortunately didn't do quite the right job you needed to this is what you come looking for and uh, to check how your your rig is, is set up all right how do, how do i finish that <laughs> and there you have it ah yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we were going to talk about side stays weren't we so how, mu how much tension do we need in side stays so, uh, I was telling the owners of this boat that what they were seeing was right. Um, we have a, a bit of a rule of thumb. When you're sailing upwind with full main, full jib, fully powered up, 
so on these Fountain Peugeots, it's around that 15 knot mark. Uh, boats like our gunboats is around 12 knots. When you're in that mode, and as the boat sort of goes through a little bit of a wave, the leeward shroud should just go loose. Um, if it's just going loose in that fully powered up uh, scenario, you know your rig tension is about correct. Um, if it's staying bone tight all the time, then your rig is too tight. Um, and all you're doing is trying to bend your platform uh, and you're not achieving anything. You want it just tight enough so that the rig isn't going to bounce around, but you want it soft enough that you're not folding your boat in half. So um, to have on your catamaran this leeward shroud, this could be the windward one, but if your leeward shroud is just going uh, loose upwind with full rig, full powered up, then you're in the sweet spot. Um, yeah, what else, what else did we talk about? We talked about rake and the mast base as well. Yeah. Should, pro should probably show the people that. Um, it's been it's been good. I've, I've been talking to somebody about uh, tuning their rig, <laughs> and uh, so uh, if we look at the rake on the mast. So that's how much the mast is bent or leaning backwards in the boat. Um, how much rake do you need? Well, first of all, check the spec. Uh, most manufacturers will give a, a rake. Um, if you can't find it. Um, then it's, it gets a little bit trickier and we've got to talk about then how you sail the boat and how much load you put on your rudders and looking at the rudder indicator and just seeing the balance of the boat. But another good indication on these production boats where everything is pretty well defined, the other good giveaway is if someone's pulled your rig and put your rig back in, have a look at the heel or the butt of the mast. If we look at this bit here, see that the base of the mast is actually sitting really flat on the uh, mast base itself. That's a pretty good indication that the rake is correct. If you're seeing a five mil gap at the front and a five mil gap, or even a three mil gap at the front, you gotta start thinking, oh, hang on. Um, this is not quite correct. Uh, and that we should have a look at our rake, um, or if there's something wrong, because the pre-bend can affect this a little bit if it's too much pre-bend one way or the other. Um, it'll also change the angle of the mast into this, but generally speaking, it's your rake. So if we've got a gap in the front here, it means you've got too much rake and the, 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 the mast is leaning back. And it means we have to shorten the forestay. If you have a gap at the back, it means that the, you haven't got enough rake and that the four stays too short and you need to lengthen it and lean the mast back a bit. So trying to get the, the mast um, butt to sit flat on the mast base is, a, is another good little indication as to how, the, how your rake is set up. Um, so yeah, another little thing to look at when you're tuning your rig. Um, so I don't think I've spoken too much about the forward diamond. Uh, we didn't have to adjust it on this boat because the, the pre-bend is, ah, it's in the ballpark. Uh, and because we're pulling on the side ones and trying to push a little bit more pre-bend in, um, that all sort of happened at the same time. So the wire at the front here, that actually controls the uh, mast so that it doesn't bend too much forward. I'm gonna go around the other side because I'm staring straight at the sunshine here. Uh, there we go, now we can see what we're talking about. So, um, if your mast is bending too much like this, you need to pull a little bit more of these wires on the front here, because as you can see, if it's bending too much like this, we want this spreader here to push that way. And to do that, we tighten this wire and that straightens our mast up. If we want to put more bend into it, we loosen this wire off and the mast will bend some more and we'll be seeing it bend forward. What you do need to be a little bit careful of, especially with these double diamond rigs, is that you do it in an even manner because you can actually make the uh, bottom panel here bend more than the upper mid panel. Because if you let 
this lower one too soft and the upper one too tight you'll see bend down here and not enough there so what you're looking for is that nice constant curving bend from one end to the other and it's done with these wires here 